Okay, so now it's uh, recording. Thank you everyone for coming. I'm Octavian Hasna and welcome to a new uh, GDG Kuzna Poké event. Uh, I'll give the microphone to Gabriel to start his presentation and to present himself. Hi everyone. Uh, today's presentation is about some platform and tool that you can use to organize your uh, transformation queries using Git in uh, Google Cloud. This is uh, Gabriel Hodoraga, and um, I'm a software developer and cloud developer for many years now. And I'm recently joined the program as a Google developer expert on the data analysis uh, domain. So this is BigQuery data form is how to organize your transformation query using Git. So let's let's start by uh, just a short, very short presentation about what is BigQuery. So BigQuery is, is the data warehouse from Google. It's fully managed, it's petabyte, petabyte scale analytics data warehouse that enables business to analyze all their data very quickly. BigQuery, it's really, really fast. And you can get, uh, if you scan like terabytes of, of data, you'll get your answer in seconds. If you try petabytes of data, you'll get your answer in minutes instead of actually managing infrastructure. Some of the features of the BigQuery are scalability. You can scale to, hand, to handle as much data as you, ha as you have. It is performance. Performance is designed for really, really high performance. With queries, they can run in seconds and minutes. Security. BigQuery allows you to set uh, security controls on all your data from uh, including row level, column level security, and also row level security. You can create all kind of um, uh, configurations to make sure that only who's supposed to see the data will see this data. And it's actually very used. It's very easy to use because BigQuery is using SQL interface and everybody who is familiar with SQL will find it very easy for that. Some of the use cases of BigQuery is business intelligence. Put your data in the in a, in BigQuery. You create your reports and then use that as a as a base for your business intelligence reports. Also, BigQuery can be used for machine learning and. If you want to do some kind of projects in data science, you can dig into data and, uh, and do it with, with BigQuery. Some of the fun facts for BigQuery is, uh, is that if you run just a typical large query, like just a few terabytes of data, you will require actually like 330 hard drives and 3000 CPU cores and about 330 gigabytes network. And this is this is coming from from a source. So this is a this is a blog post for from from Google when he explains what what exactly is happening behind the scene when a query runs. There are in BigQuery, just to have a short introduction, what is uh, its uh, data form. The BigQuery scheduled queries limitations. Basically, what you can do in BigQuery, you can schedule some queries on a recurring basis, but they come up with some limitations. You have no version control. You have no dependency between the queries and you have no variable substitutions. If the business requirements imposes at least one of the above, the, above, the solution will be 
to actually use uh, an external tool like a data form, for example. And this is bring us to the to the data form platform, which is a modern data transformation platform. Just a simple overview of what, what data form is, is a service for data analysts to develop. So you can actually develop inside con Google Cloud Console. You can test your code. You can version control and save your data, and you can schedule complex SQL workflows. Data form helps you to transform transforming the well-defined, tested, and documented suite for all your data tables. Some of the key features of the data form. It's open source. It's SQL-based language to manage data transformation. You can, it's a combination between SQL and JavaScript. And, um, and it, it's actually open source. The data form core, the open source part, enables you to create table definitions, configure dependencies, add column descriptions, and configure data quality assertion in a single repository using just SQL. Data form core can be used locally. And you have, in this way, you have the freedom not to lock in in a specific provider. And you have the flexibility for uh, more advanced use cases. Another key feature of data form is fully managed. It's serverless, is a serverless orchestration for data pipeline. Data form handles all the operation and infrastructure to update your tables following the dependency between your tables and using the latest version of your code. You also have the advantage of lineage, which is a way to trace where the data is coming from. Trigger, you can trigger SQL workflows manually. You can trigger it using a cloud composer or a workflow or some other third party services. Another key feature for data form is a fully featured cloud development environment that you can, you can work. It's basically an IDE. You can define tables, fix issues in real time, in production or in test environment. You can visualize dependency. You can commit your changes. Everything within your browser, within your cloud console, cloud console um, browser page. You can connect to, uh, you, you can connect your repository to a third party provider such as GitHub, GitLab, and commit changes and push or open pull request from this IDE, basically. This is just uh, an example of how the data form it's actually is looking. It's, um, it has on the files, you can see that this is more likely is looking like an, an IDE. You can, a list of files, you can edit the files. The saving to these files is totally automatic. And you have the option to execute, run, compile, and you'll have also intelligence there. Now let's take more dive in into the, into the data form, how it's working, and what are the main components of, uh, of it? So data form repository houses a collection of JSON configuration files. JSON configuration files and JavaScript files. Data form uses JIT version control system to maintain a record of each change to the project and to manage file versions. Each data form repository can manage its own JIT repository or to be connected to a remote uh, third party repository. Right now, the list, this is only GitHub, Git, GitLab, and Bitbucket Cloud, it's supported. Basically, it all starts with just a repository. The next step is to configure yourself a development workspace. You can create multiple development workspaces for the same repository. It's just a similar to having a Git branch for 
for what you are working on. But this is a live branch. You can you can uh, execute code within this branch. In a workspace, you create a delete the content of the repository and then commit. You can push it to your branch. You can push it to the main branch or you just dump your changes because you just don't like what you did. The next part is the workspace content. They are very simple. I'm just going to move fast because it's, um, all you have to do is you have two folders, definitions and includes. You have some, some configuration file, which is data form JSON, and you have a package JSON file where you configure all your dependencies there. Inside the definitions directory, you define all your assets, which is going to be the table. You, you have the tables, you have the views, you have the uh, assertions, and it includes you can define your own functions that you can reuse in, in other places inside the same repository. Just to give you some idea how an SQLX file is look like. As you can see, it's, it's almost the same as an SQL. You have only that part at the beginning is called config. And that's a, a set of configuration part, the configurations option that you can you can set there. And based on that, you, this file is compiled. And once the file is compiled, you will get the real SQL uh, syntax that it will run against the BigQuery. In this case, it's just going to say, it's going to replace all, all the variables. It's just exactly the same SQL with a, with a variable replaced. So workflow actions, what can you do in this SQL file? So you can source data declaration. Basically, you can say, this is my source, it's, which is, can, can be a table or an external source. And then you can reference that source in, in, the, in the whole project. You can define tables. You can define table partitions and cluster. You can define dependency between the actions. You can document your tables and also your columns. You can create custom SQL operation. Basically, this is something that if it doesn't fit in, in, in one of the categories above, you can create a custom SQL operation and, 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 and you can set it to run before and after a specific action. You can define labels and policy tags. This is very good if you want to, if you want to set up your, your um, permissions who can uh, access the data. And there is also some interesting part is execution tags. So you can tag your different assets. For example, you can say daily, weekly, monthly, and then you can keep everything together, but some of them, they will be um, executed in a different time. And also data quality test, which is tests, which is called assertions. Data form also supports JavaScript. So you can use your JavaScript um, inside one of the files. We just define a constant or, or a function. You can define it in a across repository, which is you're going to put it in an includes and then use wherever you export it from that file. And you can actually create packages. So once you have the packages, you can import that packages inside data form and use this, this, uh, these functions and reuse functionality. Once you have your data ready and uh, your files ready, and you need to compile this. Basically, data form is taking some compilation settings configured in one file, compile it to an SQL for each one of them, and then you give the compilation result. One of the things that you can do is, uh, is you can override the compilation settings in the data form JSON. And this is allows you to separate your uh, development environment from production environment. You just say, OK, right now I have a different uh, project for production. Override the settings and generate a different compilation result. Workflow execution. 
once you have your compilation and you have your graph set up and data form knows exactly what you want to do, you need to execute it. Now you have, again, multiple options to do that. You can execute it manually in development. You can execute actions one by one until you get your the whole project done. Once you are ready, most of the time in, in production environment, you will need a schedule. You can, you can schedule the execution. Um, you can schedule directly into the data form console, or you can schedule an execution using Cloud Composer, which is the managed versions of the Airflow, or you can schedule the execution using Workflows, which is another Google product, and a Cloud Scheduler. Workflow execution settings. So I will go fast to this. It's uh, it's just a simple setting. So you can have a service account who's running exactly for this. This is very good for 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 permissions. You can set all the actions. You can select some of the actions or selection tags, and you can combine all these settings in in, in many ways just to 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 get the things uh, done. And this is this is a, a short demo on how it's actually looking in uh, in reality in Google Cloud Console. Gonna pause this, and this is how this is how actually it's, it's looking. This is on on my account. Basically, this is a compiled graph. What what it is is a demo about how you can read the currency rates from the national bank. You can have some sales data here and um, once you have this data as a raw data you can uh, add it to a specific tables combine it with the catalog and you define uh, at the end you have cells by by category and this is your final table this is the output that can be used in a business intelligence Again, this is a this is a development environment. Once you are here, you can see the compiled queries. You'll see exactly how it looks like. You can run it directly here. For this one, this is the dev, dev environment, for example, and I'm going to start the execution for all this, and we'll see how this is uh, working. One of the things that he has here, as you can see, he has this dev Gabby dev. So basically, this is a prefix for all the tables, just to make sure that we don't overlap with the production table. I'm going to start the execution. You can choose all your actions here. And uh, yeah, let, let's hope that this is working. Once you start the execution, you can actually go and see Okay, it didn't work. Yeah, so it has a has a problem. Currency rate, invalid query location message, invalid value error by reading data. It says that. Okay, it just uh, it didn't work. <laughs> this is this is happening usually in the in the demo part. I was pretty sure that this part is going to work, but it's like likely it doesn't. Good. Uh, what else I can show you here is that once you have your your um, once you have your your development ready, you just go going back in this part. You just create a release configuration. Basically, you just go on this and set up your compilation overrides, schemas to fix, tables to fix, and the table. Once you have this ready. You can combine and say, okay, this is my workflow configurations. And this is the, the workflow configuration. It allows you to set up the frequency, the service account for that this is going to run, and the time zone. And also, you can selection of the tags if you have tags and selection of, of the actions. And this is going to be a schedule for that. Once you have everything ready, you will have the logs and you can check the logs. All, uh, all about this. So this is, you have everything inside this, uh, this, um, 
development environment so we can you can play with it now I'm just gonna continue so yeah after after the demo at um, just a little bit more on this on this uh, presentation it will be basically the advanced features so I'm gonna go fast with it because yeah probably this uh, this is not uh, very exciting <laughs> for for all this that, that we see here so some of the advanced features of data form so you can do a lot more than that you can have incremental tables you can have table documentation you can validate tables with assertion to make sure that all your data it's um, it's uh, it's valid and you can have custom sql operations and you have all the logs there that to see what happens in in this let's talk about a little bit what is incremental tables it just allows you to send data only what is the missing data into into these tables and not the whole table again most of the time this is going to be the, the the usage because you will not recreate the table all the time table documentation is going to look like that you just define your column what the column is doing and you have the good description for each one of them this is will be very useful at some point if you make the effort or actually document in your columns and assertions as assertion is data quality test so you just define whatever you want in your data saying okay i want this data to to not to be null or you have some special row condition and you have unique keys only one key or multiple keys that that you can do to, uh, for that just to make sure that the data you have it's uh, it's uh, it's exactly what you what you need, and you need to be aware of it. Not not after it end up in some kind of report to 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 find out that the data is it's wrong. You can stop it here and not generate the data. And also custom SQL operations. It means that you cannot if you cannot do it some some with some other option here in the operation you can do whatever you want it's just a simple pure sql queries that you can run delete data update data or create tables or create external external connections for example and of course if you don't um, if you're not able to see the logs if you're not able to see what's happening in your pipeline basically you are blind but this is covered you have logs for everything that state that, that happened in your in your in your pipeline you can have cloud monitoring so one of the cool feature is that you can you can uh, create an alert to notify you when you have this kind of error so you can go back to it look for it and fix it and and then and then move on one of the things is the managing code lifecycle. This is um, basically some back best practices that you can you can follow in order to in order to to make sure you have a a, a good code lifecycle strategy. So you can sleep. Uh, what what data form allows you to split the development and production by by using schema. Okay, just just put your your uh, prefix in fault of your tables and it's gonna work. You can split your development and production tables by schema and Google Cloud project. You can separate it from from the beginning, hey, or you can create actually development, staging, and production tables. This is this is gonna work. Some split development and production by schema is gonna look like that. So you have a JIT branch, and you have the same project. As you can see, development and production is the same branch, and your workspace you will have a, a schema suffix, so you will just have a different data set for it. If you separate it uh, from development and production, it's going to work similar to this. You'll have a branch, you'll have the main branch, and you will have a schema suffix with your workspace, because two people can can work in the same time on the same development. You can use schema suffix to make sure that they don't overlap. They can create their own tables. And you have 
you have the split development staging and production tables, you have development staging and production. So you, you have all the options to make sure that it, it fits your needs best. Okay, that's it. I think I was really, really fast. And uh, that's, it. that's it. If anyone has some questions, I can answer. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriel, for uh, the presentation. Uh, if anyone has question, you can write it on the chat. Um, I see that in your demo, uh, you have a configuration for uh, dev and a configuration for prod. The prefix is uh, the one that you choose inside the configuration. So that's why uh, the table for yes. prefix is. Yes, basically this is the this is the development uh, work work uh, space prefix. So you can configure everything to say I have a I have a development workspace, and all my tables will be prefixed with the with the, with this development workspace. In this way, there are two people can work in exactly the same thing, the same uh, the same repository. They can work exactly the, on a different branch. And then can test. They can test their the data without actually using different projects for for development. Once they are ready, they can push their changes back to the main branch or to production branch. Are any costs for using data form or? No, data form is free actually. So the whole the the all ID the schedule and everything. This is a this is a free product. So there is no cost. The only the only cost associated with this is the cost of running the queries or cost of importing data. So cost that normally they are in uh, in GCP. But only the product itself is not. It's it's free. Okay. Oh, well, I see no questions. Well, thank you for your presentation and uh, hope to see you soon for uh, another, you know, presentation when uh, uh, BigQuery Studio, Data Studio, it's uh, released and available. It's released, it's announced. Yes. But it's not still yes, it's available. Still, right now, it's still in preview. This is going to be a big deal and very helpful for data scientists when they will be able to use uh, Python inside the uh, inside the cloud console. So thank you very much for, for the event and to allow me to, to make the presentation and speak. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye bye.